In this video, we're going to focus on Newton's second law. Newton's second law of motion. All right, and this is going to talk about how mass, how force, mass, and acceleration are all um, related to each other. All right, and so th this is the actual way it's worded. Uh, so the acceleration of an object will be in the same direction and directly proportional to the force applied. The acceleration will be inversely proportional to the mass of the, the object. All right, so basically, let's just you know, directly proportional and inversely proportional. Let's just break this down. Basically, the harder you push something, the faster it's going to accelerate. And that should just make sense. All right? If I walk up and I kind of noodle arm like a little table, like, eh, it's not going to go anywhere. Right? So not, or it might accelerate just very slightly. But if I really give something a, a good, solid uh, push, then it's going to accelerate uh, much faster. All right, and so the harder something, the greater the force something has, the faster it accelerates. Uh, the more massive the object is, the harder it is going to be to accelerate, the less it's going to accelerate. If I apply the same force to something lighter as opposed to something, uh, you know, more massive, all right, it's going to accelerate less. And that should just make sense as well. All right, and some of you guys even kind of looked into that when we did our acceleration lab. The more massive an object, the more f the if the same force is applied, the less it will accelerate. So that's what it means when it says it's inversely proportional. Right? The if it's a more massive object, it is going to be uh, more difficult to accelerate. Right? It's going to require a greater force to get it to accelerate the same. Right, and, I, and I can show you that here real quick. Let me get out of here. Let me pull up the old Fed again. All right, so same thing here. If I push with, uh, once again, if I push with 150 newtons accelerating, Pretty slowly, you can see. Right, and then if I apply um, a greater force, it's, again, it's going to accelerate in the direction that I'm applying that force, but it's also going to accelerate much faster. Right, so that's how, once again, force and acceleration are related. The greater the force, the greater the acceleration. Now, if I apply, let's say, 250 newtons, you can see it's accelerating at a decent pace. Right, nothing too crazy. All right. If I apply that same force, and now I have two crates, well, it doesn't even get moving. All right. So I have to apply a greater force just to get it to accelerate, uh, even with two crates. So if I let's take this off, let's let's do the let's make it make it maybe even a little more obvious. So if I push with that's not what I wanted. Let's do this. So I say I go 300 newtons. A force being applied to this. Uh, we don't know the mass of that. Here, let me do this girl. Sorry, I forgot the mass this went on. So 300 newtons, it's going to accelerate very quickly. If I do 300 newtons here, same force being applied, a much slower acceleration, a much lower acceleration. So, so that's really what it's talking about All right, with newtons. Second law of motion. Uh, let me go back to this really quickly. All right, and this is going to be the formula we're going to use. We're going to talk about this. Uh, this is our formula for Newton's Newton's uh, second law of motion is that the force is equal to the mass times acceleration. Now, I know a lot of you are just jack because you love formulas, um, but this is going to be something that we're going to be able to uh, use to calculate if we know the mass of the object and then and the acceleration, we can calculate how much force is being applied or, you know, whatever. Um, same thing we'll be able to use. I'll go through, you know, if, if I give you the force and the mass, you'll be able to calculate acceleration. I'll go through all that with you. Uh, so we will use that. Once again, the more force, the more acceleration acting if you're acting on the same object. All right. So think of uh, throwing a baseball versus a softball. Or think of throwing a better example would be like a, a uh, let's think of like a, a baseball versus a bowling ball. Right. That might be an even more obvious one where the mass and acceleration are inversely proportional. I apply a force to a baseball and then I try to apply that same force to a bowling ball. I'm going to really hurt my arm. All right. And so the mass increases, your acceleration is going to decrease. All right. Your acceleration, the object's going to move much, uh, much slower. It's going to decrease in acceleration. If the mass decreases, 
the acceleration increases, so they're inversely proportional. Inversely proportional mass and acceleration are inversely for, for proportional. Force and acceleration are directly proportional. So the force goes up, the acceleration goes up. If the acceleration went up, that meant that the force applied went up. So those are directly proportional. If one goes up, the other one, and when it means directly proportional, I do want to say this as well. When it says directly proportional, it means if, you, if I doubled the force, so if I went two times the force, my acceleration would go two times. I would increase. So it's not just like when one goes up, the other goes up. That was probably inappropriate for me to say. If I double the force, I'm going to double my acceleration. So if I if my force is 50 newtons, the net force is 50 newtons, and the acceleration is 2, well, if my net force now becomes 100 newtons, my acceleration will be 4 meters per second squared. Mass and acceleration are the opposite. So if I doubled my mass, if my mass increased by 2, uh, like I went from 50 kilograms to 100 kilograms, then my acceleration would be cut in half, whatever it was. So if I went from 50 kilograms accelerating at 2 meters per second squared, and then I doubled it to 100 kilograms, my acceleration would be 1 meter per second squared. So if the and same thing happens here. If the mass dec decreases, if it gets cut in half, my acceleration would increase twofold. It would increase, it would double. That's supposed to be a times 2. It's kind of hard to draw on this. Right? <clears throat> Again, F net proportional to acceleration, the force increases, the acceleration is going to increase. And it's going to increase in the same direction. A uh, couple terms that I just want to refresh on. Remember, mass is the amount of matter that makes up an object, uh, and it's inertia. Volume is the size of an object, uh, the space it takes up. Weight, we're going to talk about. Weight is going to be, we're going to talk about this later. Weight is a measure of the force of gravity, because a lot of times students mistake these two weight and mass and sometimes I even use them interchangeably just because it's it's easier uh, but it's in it's not correct because weight is a measure of the force of gravity all right so what you do if weight is a force you use the formula that I talked about force equals mass times acceleration when you say well things aren't accelerating well they are due to gravity all right and acceleration due to gravity is widely accepted to be like 9.8 meters per second squared I'm probably going to round up most of the time to 10 just to make life easier. And so whatever the mass is of an object, you multiply it by acceleration due to gravity. So really our formula for weight, we'll talk about this, will be mass times acceleration due to gravity. All right, so that's the force of gravity acting on an object, which is also called weight. And here's the uh, little triangle thing that you can use, a uh, little family triangle is what I call it, because it says fam. All right, force, acceleration, and mass. So if you're Basically, if you are trying to solve for one of them, so say I'm trying to solve for acceleration. I'm going to cover up acceleration. What am I left with? Force divided by mass. If I'm trying to, if I'm trying to solve for force, all right, so if I give you something to solve for force, you cover up the force. What do I have? Acceleration times mass, all right, which is correct. All right, that's the correct formula. If I want to solve for mass, Lastly, you get the idea. If I solve for mass, I cover up the M. I have force divided by acceleration. All right, so you can use this little family triangle to figure out. Just cover up whatever you're trying to solve for, and that's your formula. So force equals mass times acceleration. Force, once again, measured in newtons. We learned that last unit. All right, weight, our formula for weight is mass times gravity. And I'm probably going to use 10. Right. And gravity, depending where you're at on Earth, will slightly vary. It's widely accepted the average is 9.8. Like I said, I'll probably use 10 most of the time. All right. And so if I say to calculate the force in each of these, it'd be force equals mass times acceleration, uh, it'd be 2,000 times 0 .5, 05, excuse me. I don't know what that'd be. It'd probably be like 100. I don't know. Get my calculator out. This is really good, I know. It's really, really intriguing. Yep, 100. All right, so the force there is going to be equal to 100 because I did the mass in kilograms times meters per second squared. And that's what a newton is. It's a kilogram meter per second squared. Uh, so your force then is going to be 100 newtons. 
And then this one, uh, once again, this this object, it's accelerating at the same rate. You can see the acceleration is the same, so the force is actually going to be less. Right? The force is going to actually be less because uh, to get it to accelerate, you don't have to apply as great of a force uh, because the mass is half as much. So if it's accelerating the same amount, this force would be 50 newtons if I multiplied those two together. Which car has a greater inertia? Well, obviously this one. Why? The mass. The mass is greater. All right, that one's got a greater inertia. The mass is greater. It's going to require a greater force which is true, we just saw that's going to be a greater force to get it to accelerate the same as this car over here, which you only needed 50 newtons of force. Over here, you needed 100 newtons of force. And we'll stop there because this video is getting...